Hello everybody and welcome to the Coconino National Forest, about 15 miles northwest of Flagstaff. We are out on a day trip adventure from Phoenix to visit a unique underground experience up here in the San Francisco volcanic field. I am joined today by my fiance Megan as we begin our adventure after a couple of miles of easy dirt roads from Highway 180. In good weather, just about any vehicle can access the trailhead. These lava tubes feature a geologic display of the interesting volcanism that dominated this area many years ago. Discovered in 1915 by lumbermen working the area, the lava tubes here are roughly 700,000 years old. Unlike most geologic features we marvel at, such as a really grand canyon or some pretty mountain stretches, this one formed in a matter of only a few hours, incredibly short on the geologic timescale. The tubes are accessed via a seemingly insignificant culvert of rocks that quickly descends down to reveal the secrets below. The tubes themselves stretch about three quarters of a mile beneath the surface and feature a number of different features that are particularly interesting. An overview map of the cave system shows some of the things that we would be seeing on our underground hike today. It is advised to bring at least two or three different light sources since we would be completely underground the entire time, so we suited up before making entry. Underground it is also consistently about 32 to 40 degrees Fahrenheit, so some warm clothing is also advised. Depending on the time of year, snow and ice may make entry into the tubes a slow task and require some careful footing. The tubes are open year-round as long as you can access the trailhead. However, on our visit, things were particularly dry and easy going. When we were ready to go, we entered the boulders and descended towards the cave. After biffing it almost instantaneously despite the dry conditions, we quickly entered into the darkness of the caves below. And it should be said because of the darkness, this video may not be as well lit or shot the same as some of my other videos, but I tried to select the most well lit scenes and I also carried a gigantic video light with us on our hike in an effort to make it as visible and watchable as possible. The hike begins by scrambling down a steep section of large boulders that drop you into the lava tubes. This section requires some careful footing and navigation, but really is probably the most difficult part of the hike in. Just past the entrance is actually the coldest part of the tube system, which consistently hovers around freezing temperatures year-round. Because of airflow, it actually gets warmer the further back you go. After a brief narrow section, we got to the main section of the tube where the cave opens up significantly. The bottom here is still pretty rocky and undulating, but as long as you have a good light source, it shouldn't be a problem. The lava tubes were likely formed when a nearby volcano erupted, and a stream of magma, either from the eruption or underground, flowed to an opening. As a result, the tops and side cooled first, slowly emptying out the tunnel of lava. The bottom of the tube remained molten lava as the remaining contents of the tube emptied out and slowly cooled, leaving behind a perfectly preserved tunnel. We messed around, playing with some long exposure photos amidst the darkness. We had now entered into one of the largest sections of the underground hike, where the ceiling reaches about 30 feet high, quite the contrast to the narrow sections where you had to watch your head. It was certainly dark, even with some headlamps. Not far down the tube, the ground suddenly became really smooth. A large crack split the floor of the cave, more evidence of the small stream of lava that flowed outward as the tubes emptied and cooled some 700,000 years ago. It was fascinating to walk along this perfectly preserved remnant of the past. Some sections of the ceiling had fallen here, although the tubes remain very structurally sound today. After a split in the tubes, the cave quickly narrows once again, 
Those who aren't vertically challenged will need to watch their head here as the ceiling narrows down to about 4 feet high and may require some crouching. If you are claustrophobic, this probably isn't the wisest place for you to visit, as there is only one way in and out, and it is easy to feel like you are trapped, especially amidst the darkness. I'll once again reiterate here how important it is to bring multiple sources of light, and at least one that can be mounted to your head for easy hiking. At this point, we came across another unique geologic feature called a splashdown, where a chunk of the ceiling fell down while the floor was still molten lava and solidified in place in the ground as it cooled off. There are a few examples of this as you head further back, making it wild to imagine what this would have looked like as it formed. From here on out, I turned on my large video light, which makes it easier to see the full scope of the lava tubes. As we approached the end, the tube was still quite large and well-defined. The bottom surface remained slightly rough and rocky from the cooled lava, but it was certainly a lot smoother than the bouldery sections nearer to the entrance. After three quarters of a mile, the cave quickly narrows to a point and the tubes come to an abrupt end. Our trek underground had reached the halfway point and we touched the end for good measure. And to celebrate, we had a mini dance party because why not have some fun at the end of a long, dark cave where you haven't seen the sunlight in a while. But now, it was time for lunch. And what better place for a picnic than the end of a lava tube? That's not something you can do every day. Our packed lunch was still in good shape after trekking through the tubes. A little for me. Their refrigerator-like temperatures ensured that everything was still nice and cold. In what might be one of the most unique places to enjoy a beer, this one was certainly well earned. Be sure to pack out all your trash to keep this place pristine for the next visitor. While the tubes aren't alive or actively changing that much, it is still important to try to keep it clean. Before turning back around, something fun to do at the very end is turn off all your lights and truly bask in the darkness and silence for a moment. It can be insane and maybe a little bit spooky. The end of the lava tubes is also the warmest, about 40 degrees due to the lack of major airflow from the entrance. We also noticed that in this section and at this temperature, it was incredibly humid. Even though this entire thing is one big lava tube, it is fascinating to look at all the different types of lava rocks that were formed as this tunnel was cooked by the flow of lava and slowly cooled over time. From jagged rocks to smooth surfaces and ripple marks, there is a ton to look at if you have enough light. We turned around and began the trek back towards the surface. The multicolored rock walls, despite the darkness, were so vibrant. The fact that this entire place exists just below ground level is incredible. While we encountered a few other visitors during our time here, there were long stretches where we were the only ones. Lights and sounds don't carry very far, especially around the corners and narrower sections of the tubes. From the wide open chambers to the narrow passageways, these lava tubes are certainly a unique experience. Whether you nerd out about the geology and formation of such a place, or you are just interested in cooling off from the summertime heat, there is something to be appreciated by everyone that visits this place. The longest in Arizona, these lava tubes are a testament to the widespread history of this area and the diverse landscapes across northern Arizona and the San Francisco volcanic field. Eventually, we made our way back to the entrance where the light at the end of the tunnel finally came into view. We scrambled up the boulder path upwards and outwards, 
back into the daylight where we had a small crowd awaiting us. If you're able to, I would highly recommend a trip to this area. The lava tubes are certainly worth the trip. I know we certainly had a lot of fun on this little day trip from Phoenix. The tubes are open year-round, however the roads that lead up to it are closed in the winter, so always check the Forest Service website for the status before coming out to visit, but like I said, highly recommend this place. I've been here quite a few times and it's always enjoyable. After the hike, we decided to relax just a little bit more before heading back down to Phoenix, so we set up the hammock in some nearby trees, grabbed a book, and enjoyed the very nice weather for just a few minutes. Overall, this was a really fun trip. Short and a little bit different, but certainly a unique Arizona experience, and one that is a blast, so thanks for tagging along. I hope everyone had a great Christmas season and the New Year's starting off well for you. This is going to be it for this video, but stay tuned for more adventures. Got a big backlog of content to get through, so I look forward to sharing that with you soon. But anyways, thanks for watching this one, and as always, we'll see you on the next one.